So let's talk about pendulums. So what is a pendulum? Well, a pendulum is just a mass hanging from a string that moves back and forth. So in order for us to describe this motion, we need to give ourselves some parameters. So we've got a length of the string, we've got a mass m that's hanging from the string, and then the way that we're gonna measure the location of this mass is by an angle. And it's standard to measure the angle off the vertical. All right, so here I've got the pendulum sitting there. And what forces are acting on it? Well, I'll draw a free body diagram. We've got the string acting on it, and that puts a tension on it, T. And we have the weight acting on it. Now, notice that this cannot be in equilibrium because this tension force and this weight force can't cancel each other out. Now, the thing about strings is that this tension is going to be whatever it has to be so that there's no motion in this direction. There can't be any motion in that direction because the string has to keep its length. It doesn't get to get longer or shorter. It has length L. All right, so what that means is that it's the part of the weight that is perpendicular to the tension that's going to generate acceleration. All right, well, this angle, well, this angle right here is theta. That means this angle is theta. That means this angle is theta because of vertical angles from geometry. All right, now, this angle is theta. This line is mg long. So that means that this part, the part that is opposite the angle, must be mg sine theta. All right, so we've got a force, mg sine theta, that's pulling to try to make the angle smaller. All right, now that's kind of complicated, but we can make a nice simplification when theta is small. All right, if theta is small, then it turns out that sine theta is approximately equal to theta. Now this only works in radians. You gotta be in radians, but that's actually what we're gonna want to be in anyway. So let's look at why this is true real quick. So over here in the unit circle, I've got a small angle theta. Now, where's sine theta? Sine theta is right here. It is opposite theta. All right, where's theta? Well, theta is that angle, but since we're in radians, that means that this distance right here is also theta. So that's theta, and this is sine theta. Now, as theta gets smaller, you can see that sine theta will get closer and closer and closer to theta, because I'll just get like over here, and they'll be the same length. So that's why that's true. It's called the small angle approximation. All right, so we've got sine theta about theta, and that means that the force is equal to mg theta. It's proportional to theta. Now, this reminds us of something. Remember that theta is telling us the location of the mass here. So that means that we've got a force that's proportional to location. But that's Hooke's law. So that means that we've got simple harmonic motion. So x is not theta because theta is not a length and x has to be a length but x will be the length times theta. So that means that my spring constant will be mg over L, all right? So that means that I'm gonna have a period of motion, which is two pi times the square root of L over G. Now I can solve this for L if I want to and write it as L equals GT squared over four pi squared, all right? We can actually use this to measure the length of a pendulum. So let's look, we got a pendulum right here. Now what I want to do is I want to displace this pendulum a little bit and then set it into motion. So let's watch. All right, so this is the amplitude, that angle right there, which is small, fairly small. And now if I let this go, there it goes in simple harmonic motion. Now remember what simple harmonic motion meant. It meant that the period was supposed to be totally independent of the amplitude. So let's just check this out. All right, so I'm gonna go a little bit and I wanna calculate the period. So that means that I need to count seconds until this mass 
gets back to the same point. Now it's difficult for me to do that for just one, so let's do it for two or three whole oscillations. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna let it go, and then I gotta count seconds. I'm gonna try to do this. One, two, three, four. All right, so it's about four seconds. All right, let's see what happens if we've got a little bit of a bigger amplitude. One, two, three, four. All right, almost the same. A little bit longer period, it takes a little bit longer because when the angle is larger, it actually makes this approximation not true anymore. And it makes it so that the period's a little bit um, longer than what's given by this formula. I was probably not very accurate in counting seconds either, but we'll see. All right, so let's try to measure the length of this pendulum from that period. So I'm again gonna measure two periods. All right, one, two, three, four. All right, so a little bit more than four seconds is two periods, all right? So let's take it as 2t equals for, let's say, 0.2 seconds, all right? So that means that the period is 2.1 seconds. All right, so now I need to plug this into here and carry out all the calculations. All right, but I'm tired, I don't wanna do that, all right? I just wanna estimate. So one thing that's neat about this formula is that in SI units, G is 9.8 meters per second squared, all right? Pi squared, pi squared is almost 10. It's actually very, very, very close to 9.8. So these guys cancel out. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful fact. They, they, they don't cancel exactly, but I mean, geez, my period is not exact either. So, you know, I got news for you. So what's happening is the length is the period squared over four. And this always will work, you know, approximately, for any length pendulum, as long as we don't move it too far, all right? As long as it's small amplitude oscillations. All right, and so this is gonna give us the period, or the, sorry, the, the length in what? Well, we did this in SI units, so that means that the period gotta be in seconds, and then that's gonna tell me a length in meters, all right? Well, T, all right, again, I'm tired. I don't, I don't wanna square 2.1. Let's just square two. All right, two squared is four. Four divided by four, well, I can do that, it's one. So that tells me that this pendulum has a length of about one meter. It's a little bit longer than that, but I know that because the period was a little bit bigger than two seconds. All right, that's a real nice, easy way that you can measure the length of very long things up to the top of a ceiling. You know, I've actually done that in a restaurant once where they're hanging a lamp down. Now, of course, they didn't like it very much, but you. Just move it a tiny bit. The bigger it is, the less accurate it is. So you don't want to swing the lamp all over the place. You just kind of go a little bit. And it'll go back and forth. Period. Get that. Seconds squared over four. That's the length of the pendulum. And that's pendulums.